forced to roll. Tripped up from behind by Keith McCann. You talk about Keith McCann, and he's a non-stop guy. And he's got the speed to play. The Alabama guy can run. I tell you, he's going to run right into McCants there. And he's thinking Keith McCants is number 90. He's playing right here. He doesn't go for the fake, and he just runs, boom, just helmet to helmet. Yeah, McCants comes through the scot free here. His job is yeah, to control, but well, he throws it. He does throw it. You're going to see him come from the left side of your screen right there. Boom. See that? Ball's up. Looks to me like they've been waiting for Keith McCants to take a step up. Today, he's turned it up a notch. I thought Keith was probably one of the best football players that ever come out, ever come out of our area. Gosh, he was just a Tarzan on the field. He could do anything. What are you doing today, and why are you doing it? How's it feel when everyone's betting against you? When everyone said Keith McCann's a drug addict, Keith McCann's gonna be dead soon. Keith McCann's a loser. Keith McCann's ain't doing shit. And now you prove them wrong, and you're still here. How's that feel? Does that motivation make you feel bad, sad, happy? Well, I tell you how it makes me feel. I'm the, I always been the underdog, and I always root for the underdog because it's something greater than the underdog that is the, the, those champions. And in my heart, I'm a champion. So what people didn't know about, about Keith McCants coming out of the college and I'm being a rated number one player in the country is that I had a bad leg. And one of the coaches said, okay, I signed a five-year, $7.6 million contract. And one of the coaches made the statement, uh, what the doctor said, McCants ain't going to last for five years. They said, we only need him for three. 27 doctors of, of the NFL looked at it, and they said that I can have surgery if I want to. Other than that, I just have to deal with the pain and play. I've been doing it for four years, and my knee is not a major concern. But my performance will take care of itself. So, when people betted on me to be dead in a certain, certain amount of time, is that they probably wasn't right, and I wanted to be dead. I was one of the most dangerous person on the face of the earth. I walked the street, homicidal, suicidal, and couldn't be trusted as diagnosis as a mental institution. I threatened the NFL to go and shoot them up if they gave me no money to help me out. After my lawyer told me I had a nervous breakdown and um, I was sick, they made a statement that I was crazy before they drafted me. That's why they drafted me. When I heard that, I flipped the strip. So if it wasn't for my Uncle Arthur, I probably would have went and shot up the NFL. But there's a better way to skin a cat. And I'm going to do it by my voice, about spreading the message about what the actual NFL is and what they stand for. By doing motivation speaking, going to different high schools, colleges, um, the, writing a book, putting it out, documentary film. I want people to hear my story because I'm not the deadbeat person, I'm not the, the, the bomb, I'm not the drug addict that people said, said I am or they think that I am. I'm a human being with a soul and trying to make a difference in this world. Because if I can come back from, from where I was, I want to motivate people, I want to inspire people to do the same thing that I'm doing. And with me going through the things I have gone through, I'm able to touch people's lives across the world. They turn you into a fucking monster on the field, and you take that monster home with you. And you hurt the people around you that love you. And you don't know why you do it. And they don't help you. They don't give you an answer. I think it's a... They're the biggest lawbreakers in the world, and they get away with it. It fucking derailed my life and caused me almost to lose my life. <sighs> and people root for these people every day, every week. All season long, and not knowing the effects that it have on an individual, or his family, or his loved one, or his wife, or his children, and then when we commit suicide, how many times I stuck a gun in my mouth? How many times I tried to OD? How many times I just hung myself? How many times I lose will to live? Do, do anybody care? <laughs>